I grew up in Ukraine, and uh, when the Chernobyl accident happened, I was in high school. Um, I lived many, many uh, miles away, so I wasn't, I didn't observe it firsthand. Uh, but when I went to medical school in Belarus, um, I saw the first patients coming into the wards with thyroid cancer. These were very young children, um, under age five. Very large amounts of radioactive materials were released into the air and contaminated large territories in Ukraine and in neighboring countries in Belarus, Russia, and further north in Finland and uh, Sweden. There has been a lot of research on the long-term health effects of exposure to Chernobyl radiation. And the primary finding so far is the increased risk of thyroid cancer and other thyroid diseases in those who were children and adolescents at the time of the accident. And also increased risk of leukemia, but only among those who participated in the cleanup work in, at the Chernobyl power station and received uh, substantial doses of radiation. There was a, m a multitude of isotopes, you know, we're talking about probably hundreds. Uh, the major one was the largest radioactivity uh, was um, iodine-131, um, and its half-life is eight days, which means by, that by eighth day, half of it radioactivity is gone, has disintegrated. Um, that's why after two months after the accident, so we're talking about the beginning of June, there was no longer radiation from radioactive iodine. Um, there are other isotopes such as cesium and strontium, various isotopes of these two, um, which persist in nature for 30 years and longer. And these, um, still emit radioactivity, and that's why 30 kilometer zone is still closed and uh, former residents are not allowed to come back because it's still highly radioactive. So thyroid gland uh, preferentially absorbs uh, these radioactive iodine um, isotopes and sort of acts as a sponge for these particles. Um, also, children's gland is very active, much more active than adults. And that's why children received higher doses of radiation. And later on, we observed increased risk of thyroid cancer in children, but not among adults. Unfortunately, in Ukraine and Belarus, those are known areas with very low iodine in the soil. And so supplementation programs should have been in place. And they were in place, but they were not uniform. And that's why a lot of children, school-age children, kindergarten children, um, were very low on iodine. And that sort of precipitated the problem. They got even worse, even larger amount of radiation because they were not, their diet was iodine deficient. Based on the tumor registries in Ukraine, Belarus, and Russia, and um, death certificates, we know that only 14 people have died from thyroid cancer. It's a very benign cancer, but it does cause a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of complications. Treatment usually uh, includes complete removal of the thyroid gland, um, and then treatment with radioactive iodine uh, to target other metastases. However, the major complication is that for the rest of the, their lives, patients have to take replacement hormones. And so the morbidity later on in life is related to this uh, hormone imbalance. People are generally very afraid of radiation and to me, it strikes as a fear of the unknown, something that you cannot see, cannot perceive, cannot smell. Um, I've seen in several reports, uh, people have said that the biggest so far consequence of Chernobyl was uh, psychological effects, primarily because people were associated 
any kind of disease or any kind of problem with radiation. Um, and it didn't help that at the time the country was going, was disintegrating, so there was a lot of economical hardships, uh, political unrest, and they all got tangled in with radiation in Ukraine, Belarus, and Russia. And so in many instances, the fear of radiation uh, got really exaggerated because of that. Our studies involve 25,000 young people at this time, and they have showed a tremendous support for our studies. We send them invitations to come, they always come in, um, even if they go to study at a different university far away from our studies, they will come back just to participate in our study. And that's why we were able to maintain the return rate, screening rate in our studies is 95%. So some people came for screening four times, uh, the majority of them came for screening four times. Um, that's actually not observed in any studies that you would do, for example, um, you know, in the U.S., a screening study. So they were very supportive of us, and they understood that we are trying to get to the bottom of it. We want to know exactly what radiation does. Uh, we are on their side, and, um, you know, that's our main goal, to give good answers to them. People who went into the cleanup zone, it was the so-called 30-kilometer exclusion zone with Chernobyl power plant in the middle of it, in the epicenter of it. Um, people who went into that zone got exposed to gamma radiation. And gamma radiation uh, exposes the entire body, not just one gland or one tissue. Uh, and among them, bone marrow. And bone marrow is one of the most radiosensitive tissues in the body. Um, we know that approximately 600,000 workers participated in the cleanup work. And we are talking about uh, the time from 1986 to 1990 when the cleanup finished. So during those years, 600,000 workers from Ukraine, Russia, and Belarus participated in the cleanup. Uh, some of them got substantial doses because they were firefighters, early responders. Some of them got really small doses because they were just uh, driving cars and bringing the supplies and something like that. So there is a variability um, and a large uh, variability in the dose distribution. There are some risk projections based on previous study of atomic bomb survivors and studies of people who were exposed to radiation because of cancer. So when we use these mathematical prediction models, we can estimate that approximately um, 4,000 to 6,000 um, thyroid cancers are due to exposure to Chernobyl. Um, the numbers for leukemia are slightly less um, accurate, but we also think about perhaps three, 4,000 uh, cases of leukemia. Um, but this, again, leukemia is only observed among those with really substantial doses. Uh, there are no studies that showed increased risk of leukemia among uh, people who lived around the power plant at contaminated areas. One good example is um, distribution of potassium iodide. Uh, which, if you take the pill, it prevents the radioactive iodine in, from entering into your body and depositing in the thyroid gland. We have an example of two countries, Ukraine and Poland. In Ukraine, the distribution of potassium iodine was not done. In Poland, it was done within two days. And as a result of such a campaign, we do not see an increase in thyroid cancer in Poland, in children and adolescents but we do see it in Ukraine. So it's a clear indication that um, having a plan in place, having a stockpile of these pills, distributing them in a timely manner, immediately after the accident, uh, does uh, have a positive role in preventing long-term thyroid cancer. The 
when we did a study of U.S. professional nuclear power workers, um, it's a study of approximately 50,000 workers who wear uh, radiation dosimeters every day, so their doses are carefully monitored throughout their occupational life. So we followed up these people for a long time, 10, 20, 30 years, and their average dose was lower than one than the dose from one uh, chest computer tomography. So we're comparing a lifetime occupational dose and one computer tomography. Our computer tomography includes very many, many, many x-rays. And so when you add them up in the hundreds and thousands, that's when the dose increases. So something like uh, flying, um, x-ray of luggage, x-ray when you go through the security. Those are very minimal, very small doses. I've done a study in Canada where we looked at the El Dorado uh, Company Limited workers. And it's a very interesting group of workers because it includes both uranium miners who were working deep down in the mines and they were exposed to the byproduct of uranium, um, inhaled it with the dust, and later on where it increased risk of lung cancer. But it also, this group also includes workers who worked in the processing of uranium and got exposed to very different, many different types of radiation, including gamma. Um, and we are looking at that group in particular trying to find out if they have increased risk of other cancers, such as leukemia, for example. Um, so these studies are still, we're still analyzing the data, but it's a very interesting group of workers. Uranium miners have only increased risk of lung cancer and nothing else. But the other group who worked in processing may have different risks. A lot of countries have weighted this question and have come up with different answers. So for example, in France, 80% of energy comes from nuclear power plants. Uh, a much larger proportion of um, energy in Canada comes from nuclear energy compared to the US, where we have maybe 20% comes from nuclear energy. So every society has um, decided differently on that.